What is up everybody? Welcome back to Tank K and as you can see in front of me, I got a lot of stuff we're going to be looking at. So obviously you can see we've got a lot. I've got three Elegoo printers. I've got a resin printer and a PLA printer. For this video, we're just going to be looking at the PLA printer and then we will get into the wash station, the resin one in a separate one, but let's dive in and see what we get. So like I said, we've got three Eligu, Elgu, however you want to say it, products. We've got two printers and a wash and cure station. So we've got the Neptune 2, which is a PLA printer. We've got the Mars 2, not the pro version, the newer resin printer, but not quite the pro. Uh, the, the Mars 2 Pro, I think, came out before this one did. And then this is the Mars 2. So it has a slightly smaller um, resin container or build platform. Not quite 100% sure. And then I've got the Mercury, I think is what it's called. The wash and cure machine. Um, I think that's the plus. It does the washing and the curing. So and then I've got some miscellaneous stuff up here. I've got uh, four kilograms of PLA, four different brands, or maybe three different brands, I don't remember. And then I've got a pint or a thousand grams of Elegoo, just their regular resin. It was like a deal. And then some miscellaneous stuff, some protectors for the resin printer, and then extruders for the Neptune, different sizes. Um, so you can mess around with all of that. So in this video, we're not gonna be looking at everything. We're gonna be focusing first on the Neptune to the PLA printer, and then in another video, we'll go into the Mars 2 resin printer and the wash and cure station. Now, I've never had a 3D printer ever before, so going all in, I guess. But I've never had a 3D printer, so we're gonna be looking at what you get in the box, setting it up, and if you're like me and you've never had one, we're gonna pretty much go through this together. I've looked up a ton of reviews of the Neptune 2, like Uncle Jesse and everything like that, going through it, so I have kind of an idea of how to assemble it and how to get going. Let's figure this out. So ignore the cable if you see the cable from my mic. So like I said, we got the Neptune 2. This is what we're gonna be looking at. Wash and Cure Station Mars 2. All right, let's dive into the box and see what we get. All right, some nice packing material. Actually really decent packing material. We come from other uh, products. Um, you start really appreciate when people pack stuff really well. We've got a user manual, which I don't care what anybody says about user manuals. Um, in this whole setup thing, we're going to be referring to this a lot. And then as you can see on the secondary camera, we have, looks like the, the actual base of it. I'm not sure how much comes unassembled, but we're going to uh, figure that out. So let's pull this all out. What's pretty clearly obvious is the power supply. Some miscellaneous stuff. We have the, it's one of these stepper motors. The Z rail on the back and then looks like another cross beam support. And if I'm saying names incorrectly, forgive me. I don't know what any of this stuff's called. More beam supports. Uh, I believe this is for the actual printing head nozzle. Well, again, whatever the technical term of it is. Uh, miscellaneous parts, some PLA filament, scraper tools, power cable, USB. Absolutely no idea. The extruder assembly. I believe. Again, could be wrong. Don't sue me. More stepper. Oh, nope. This is the actual printing head. There's the nozzle right there. And then the fans on it. Single fan design. But we'll dive into that further and let's get this base out. However we do that. All right, we're going to just dive right into building. We've got everything out that comes with the Neptune 2. Let's open up the parts package scraper that they 
try to cover some zip ties, all of our miscellaneous screws, screwdrivers, Allen keys, hex keys, wrenches, whatever you want to call it, our clippers to clean up prints, a sample little five meters of some white no name PLA. The um, belt for the Y axis, I think. I could be getting the axes mixed up. Like I said, guys, I've never, never used any of this stuff before. And a micro USB with the PTFE tube holder. It looks like a second nozzle. And then our SD card looks like a transcend almost. Some no name. I would replace this uh, SD immediately with something else. Okay, so we've got all of this, got all of this, got all of this, set this aside. Don't want to break anything. That would suck. Okay, so the first thing is we need six and seven. Which looks like possibly these two. It's right here. All right, so we got our, what well, looks like six and seven right here, which is our side supports, struts, braces, whatever you want to refer to them as. So it'll assemble like that. Sweet. And we already have one installed and we need our M5 screws by 45 and nuts. Longest ones. Okay, so I'll set this down. Now, one thing when you're installing these, um, leave them loose. And that goes with building anything. Leave them loose until you have everything assembled and go back in and tighten everything up. Just get them snug up so they're loose, but they're not, like I said, super tight so you can still move everything around. While I was building these and assembling, I noticed that it was actually off by a good amount. Now it's not as bad but we're gonna fix it one more time. I didn't wanna bore you guys with building everything, but if you flip it onto your side, there's two more screws, bolts, whatever you wanna call them, and they're the same size. And I just loosen these up if it's a little off, depending on which side it was. This one was pretty clearly off, probably hard to see, but you could actually see the difference in metal here. I don't know, that's probably not picking up. You can see a little bit of silver from the unpainted side. So just loosen these up a tad. So you have ability to rotate this and you're not gonna be able to see it, but you can feel it. So I'm just gonna hold it in place while I re-tighten these down to eliminate any wobble. You don't want any wobble in this. Now there's still a little bit of play that I wanna fix. There we go, get it nice and snug. There we go, got rid of all that play. Perfect, now it's stable. All right, so we have these beams attached but not super tight. And now we're going to add onto the right side, if you're looking at the front of it, we're gonna add the power supply. And these, since we're not moving anything else, the power supply just is the power supply. We can get them nice and snug on there, that way it doesn't move. You don't need to over tighten it. I don't recommend over tightening it. Just get it nice and snug so it's not going anywhere. Once you get like a little bit of resistance, you don't need to, you don't need to crank it on there. Okay, the next part of the installation is gonna be the Z axis limit switch. I'm just gonna install on the left side of the base right here. So we have the little Z axis switch right here. It's gonna install into these two holes on the left. I can try and get this camera to pick up down there to the left. And then the manual says to install it about five millimeters above it. And we use the by 18, which I'm gonna assume are these little guys. So it wants the bottom of the base about five meters up, five millimeters up. So we're just gonna do it to the bottom of the base. That seems good to me. And now we're gonna move this around and we're gonna install the stepper motor. 
which is this bad boy, to the back right here. All right, we've got the stepper motor installed on the side here. And the next thing it calls for is us putting in the Z-axis rail. However the hell this goes in. All right, so that just goes in like uh, so. Then we gotta tighten up these little screw hickeys right here. Down at the bottom. Okay, so the next piece we're actually gonna install is we're gonna assault, uh, assemble the printer head. This piece right here, you're gonna get, this is one side of the stepper motor. And you gotta get these screws in this little area down here. And then those are going to mount into the side here. Right, and once you've got it, I'll come over here. Once you've got it, this is the side with the long holes and you have to work it through. So let me get these started. Okay, so this is the side, see down here? That's where you gotta get these pieces in here to move one of the arms across. And I'm just following the, the build log, so I don't know what any of these things are actually called, sorry. Um, but I just, I don't. Upon installing the X-axis bar, we've got one side mounted in with the um, extruder coming out. Then we need to assemble the other side. All right, so the belt, unfortunately, is not really a good way to show you. Let me get up in here real quick. All right, so the belt is gonna run through right here and run across this line right here, and then we need to attach it, so. All right, so we've got one side put through. We need to put the other side through. And unfortunately, guys, there's not a really good way for me to show you while I'm doing this because it's a pain just for me to do it in the first place. There we go. Headpiece now, so we've got the cable ran through. Now we need to slide on this guy. All right, now we got to install the other side of the bearing. And I know I'm gonna say this a lot, guys. Sorry, I wish I knew the, the technical names for a lot of this stuff. This is my first 3D printer. I know there's an X, Y, and a Z axis. I know Z axis is up and down. I know X axis is side to side. I know Y axis is back to back, um, or front to back, I should say. Um, but outside of that, I don't know what these parts are technically called. So I know we have, this is our X axis assembly with our printing head and the fan. And then we have our belt, tensioning belt that drives the head back and forth. Um, you've got your Z axis, goes up and down. Um, we'll get there, we'll get there guys. We'll get there, bear with me, bear with me, we'll go. Yeah, I guess that's correct, okay. So for the belt chute, if you can see this right here and right here, it just goes through these two little slots right here. And that's what gives it that tension. And you can go back and forth. Okay. Hopefully that's right. If, uh, if I do anything wrong, guys, just let me know. Um, first 3D printer, I'm learning, join the community. So let's go. We want to tighten this. Now, I don't know how tight is tight. So we're just going to get it like taut. I guess, and go from there. Cause I don't know how tight we want this cause I don't want to blow out a stepper motor. I don't want to overheat anything. So I'm not sure how tight we want this to go. Should they free turn? I don't know. I mean, they, they, they're rolling with it. They're rolling with it fine. Uh, let me know guys, because I, I'm not really a hundred percent sure um, how tight they're supposed to be. Ooh, let's go. Let's go. Look at that. Look at that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm excited. Oh, it doesn't go up very well. Doesn't want to go up very well. Maybe I put it down too far, but there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. We got this up. Got this up. Look at this. Okay. Now let's put the top brace on again, because we have everything pretty much loose. We can get everything fitting in here nice. Now we're gonna go with our five by 25s, four of them top locked in. Let's unloosen these a little bit. I think I saw this on, was it Uncle Jesse? I think I saw this part on. So 
get this top portion as loose as possible. All right, so we have it at the, the uh, highest the z-axis will let us go. So this separation should be good. So we're going to tighten down this top now because this is gonna be the optimal, I think that's the right, the optimal um, distance. This is where it wants to sit. So it's gonna sit naturally. And then what we'll do is we'll loosen up the bottom a little bit more. We'll get these all nice and snug on here. Just nice and snug. We're not, we're not over cranking it or over tightening it or anything like that. So now what we wanna do, loosen the bottom two, a lot of bottom four screws up, run this all the way down and then that should be sitting at the optimum position. Okay, so this is the PLA holder. Get up in there. Focus you bastard, there we go. Okay, so this mounts on the top Z-axis frame, or X-axis, and pretty much what these screws are, they're like little, um, if you're familiar with like rifles or anything like that, it's pretty much like an M-lock, um, M-lock mount. So this goes in the little, I don't know what you call them, the little grooves at the top right here. And then as you tighten it, it'll turn sideways and it'll lock in place. All right, so the next part is going to be connecting everything, getting it all assembled. So we're gonna try and, so, and they're each labeled too. So if that doesn't, if that doesn't help, so right here, you can see everything's labeled Y-axis, Z-axis, filament. And then on these little, if I can get in here, it's probably gonna be hard to see with this camera. But if you see that little yellow tag on there, it says Z, so it's a Z-axis controller. Okay, so we got the filament runout sensor connected here. We'll get the PTF tube connected here in a second. We just gotta finish connecting all of the other connectors. Uh, e goes in, so E goes into the stepper motor. So this is a connector, yeah. All right, so I don't see, maybe it's in the manual here in a second. So you have your PTF tube, PTFE tube. It goes in right here, which I'm not a huge fan of their design. There's a bunch of ways to fix it, but we'll get there. So you just put the PTFE tube in here until it bottoms out. You'll feel it bottom out. It won't let you go any further. And once it's in there, grab one of these little blue plastic pieces in the bag here. In the bag, one of these little blue hooks right here. Blue hook. And it's just gonna lock it into place. That's all. Goes right there, locks it into place. We've gotten all of the doohickeys plugged in. So now we have the assembled Neptune Two. So it does have a flex plate on it that's attached by these little binder clips. You got your touch screen, which is pretty cool. It does have a touch screen. Then you have your actual nozzle, PTFE tube. You have all your sensors. Holder here. Let's take this off and let's look at this. So of course you got a heating bed. Not magnetic or anything like that. Oh, cool. See, good thing we looked over it. So there's a film right here we want to take off. Get that nice peel going on. All right, very important guys. On the back here, there's a 115, 230 volt adapter. Luckily one way it's not gonna hurt it, but here in the States, did you wanna make sure you have the 115 selected? There we go. Okay, what we're doing right now is we're gonna level it real fast. Okay, so unfortunately I don't have a really good way to show you. So on here, we can select all the points. I'll get in closer after we're, we're off of here. We'll get into the menu system here in a little bit when I, when I mess around with a little bit, but we're gonna go to point one on the leveling. And the point here is the manual is not really great on telling you how close is too close. So we've got it adjusted. I've already gone through leveling once. And we'll put the paper under here. And you wanna level it, because every time you level it, it's going to change. So. Get the paper here, and I, I was just stopping it when I get a little bit of resistance. I can still move the paper, but I'm getting resistance from it. So we'll go to point two. And we'll continue this a few times until we get good active resistance on all of them. So we'll stick this in here. All right, let's get a test print going and see how this goes. So let's grab the SD card it comes with. And we'll plug it in right down here. All 
right, SD card goes in upside down. So we have that. Go to printing. All right, cool. We have a Buddha. We can print a little Buddha. All right, so we have that loaded in. Let's load in our sample PLA. All right, so we got our successful little Buddha print, and I'll have some close-ups here of the little benchmarking, little basic STL that's included with the Neptune 2, but this has been the Elegoo Neptune 2. Um, Amazon, when you can get it, I think it retails normally for 175, and there's random coupons, $10 off, $15 off. I got it with $15 off, um, and then the filament, everything like that kind of adds up, but for the price, guys, this 3D printer is pretty, pretty freaking neat. Um, the, the test print came out great, so we'll play around with it more. This is the first 3D printed item I've ever printed, and it's a basic one. So you'll see more of this, and then stay tuned for the next Elegoo product, which is the Mars 2 and the wash station that comes with it. And uh, we'll dive in there, but as always, y'all have a good one.